What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the first episode and maybe the only episode about Unveil, a top-down survival game that actually jumped into my inbox a couple of days ago. I've given it a couple of hours and enjoyed my time with it, and so I figured I would bring you all along for maybe just like a single episode expose, or if we end up playing longer than that, that'll be pretty cool. It's a little bit limited right now because it's an early access like every other survival game on Earth, but you may recall, if you wanted to know what the game was like, you may recall that a while back I played a game called Forsaken Isle that was sort of like Zelda meets survival. Unveil would be Earthbound or Final Fantasy meets Survival, not in the sense that it has a lot of storyline or anything like that, but instead that it's a menu-based JRPG that focuses on hardcore survival simming. Now, the game is not that hardcore as it stands right now. In fact, it's pretty simple, but ultimately I think the developer wants to do something with it that's a lot like Unreal Worlds, or Unreal World, I don't remember if that's pluralized or not, and I think that that's actually a commendable gesture because Unreal World is a very, very unique game and we need more games like that. And so I wanted to shine a little bit of light on this title. You can get it down in Steam. It's going to come out later this week, I think. If you look down below in the description, I'll have all the information. But without much more talky, 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 let's play the game, shall we? The game does have weird controls as I'm going through the menu right here. Your right hand controls everything on the arrow keys and your left hand with ZX and spacebar do cancel, confirm, and menu respectively. So I was hoping the game would be controlled by a controller, an Xbox 360 controller or a PS4 controller in my heart of hearts because I really when I think of SNES JRPGs I think of playing them with a controller but as of right now you got to use old school 1980s Commander Keen controls if that bothers you they are rebindable so you could do Wast and something else if you wanted to I'm lazy and haven't rebound them so I've just gotten used to what the game has already the content on offer at the moment is limited to a bunch of scenarios which I will read off for you the first scenario is called Roots and it's basic survival skills you know you kill stuff you pick up berries, you set things on fire, you have a great time with an emphasis on the setting things on fire. You're probably not going to die, it's a very easy tutorial. Fishing time, you got to survive for a couple of days only fishing. Pretty cool. And then hot training is not some like introductory primer to porno acting or anything like that. Instead, you have to survive on an island that's insanely hot, and you've got to deal with heat stroke and a bunch of other stuff, which is actually fairly time consuming and difficult. I've never beaten it just yet. I've come within 15 minutes of beating it, but I just can't quite pull it on through. So what we're going to play today is called Free Roam. These over here are actually the only Free Roam scenarios that are in the game. Tiny Island gives you a very small island to survive on, and you have to survive for seven days. But the island is so small and uninteresting that I figured I would probably just do Free Roam, because Free Roam has a really, really big expanse of land that's a lot more entertaining. Probably get like one or two episodes out of it for when the game comes out so that people can check it out and figure out what the game is like. So let's play that, shall we? There's that guy in the crowd right now that's like, No, we shall not. Let us not play it. Welcome to our island, everybody. Huh, where are we? I see mountains up north. And I see a forest on the east, a creek to the west, and a seashore down south. Okay, let's adapt, survive, and set our own goals. So I think this game is very, very difficult, and it's also sort of RNG-laden. I've had troubles with it in the past. I don't survive very well, and so the first thing I want to do is make sure that we can start fishing sooner rather than later. So if we can hustle out some fishing, I think that's the best thing to apply ourselves to right this moment. And so the first thing we need is a couple of worms. I'm going to dig those out of the ground by pressing X on the ground. Ah, we extract loot right there. I'll probably dig one more time, and if we get lucky... I don't know if we will, but we might. Let's dig another hole right here. Ah, there we go. So we got two worms. I'm going to extract those. Those two worms are going to be pivotal to our strategy. Obviously, they're going to act as the catalyst for us generating a couple of fish. And up until we get that done, we are going to be very, very hungry. At the bottom of the screen, you will see a yellow bar. This game has bars like a college town. The yellow bar is our hunger and our energy. Everything you do in the game from walking to harvesting, etc., is handled by your energy bar going up and down. On the opposite end, you'll see a blue bar. That's going to be our hydration meter when you're surviving hydration is very 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 incredibly important in the middle you'll see the temperature the hotter it gets the more you dehydrate if the bar fills up you'll see a ring around that right there the ring around the 88 if it fills up you die of hotness you get like heat stroke and you just fall over dead if it goes down too low you actually end up going hypothermic and you die of being too cold so let's head off to the west because they said there was a water supply and I think that's important if we can get ourselves all nice and filled up on water you lose water a lot of ways when you're in a survival situation and a lot of people think it's only from like not drinking water and sweating in fact, your skin loses water over time from just the humidity in the air. You lose it from digestion. You lose it from salivation. You lose water very, very easily as a human being. And so we need to be careful about it. It's 90 degrees right now. My suggestion would be that we head to the beach and we start fishing as soon as possible. Because if we can get two or three fish before we start up the game, we're going to be in a very, very good situation. Let me go to my inventory very rapidly. And what do we have? We've got a couple of sticks. We don't have a big stick, though, which we need. 
Let's find a big stick real fast. If we can find a big stick around here somewhere, we'll have better luck. There's one right there. We're going to keep the little branches. I need a couple of big sticks just in case because we're going to need to start a fire and some other stuff. There's one right there. Can't start a fire. Can't start a fire without a big ass stick. These sticks are for hire. They cost like 35 cents a tick. So tick is just like a random measurement that sticks use to measure everything. Don't worry about it. It's not important. Just if you were going to live in the stick world, though, you should possibly know about it. We need to head south now. We are getting kind of warm, which is making me nervous. But I think we should be able to outlast all this. Ooh, there's something right there, too. What are you? Hello. Would you like to join me on my adventures? A pouchy fruit. I'd rather have a pouchy fruit than a pouty fruit. So let's go ahead and grab that. I'm going to grab another stick from right here. We got plenty of fruit in order to make ourselves healthy over the long term. The pouchy fruit, we can actually use that to store water. Just like we can take a coconut, we can turn it into a canister for holding water. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. The only thing we care about at the moment is getting down here and then making sure we get to fishing. So I'm going to climb down this, slide on down. There it is. Use our butt cheeks as a sled. Oh, yeah. It's so grindy and unpleasant. Then we'll go down to here. And the first thing that I need to do is grab a coconut because it's in our way. You can't fish if there's a coconut on the beach. It's bad luck. We're going to craft right here. We're going to take the vines. We're going to take a stick. And we're going to take one of the thorns. And that's going to make us a, I think, a branch fishing rod. Yeah, there we go. That'll look good. Take a branch path real fast. The next thing we're going to do is eat a bunch of food. And so I'm going to eat the pouchy food very fast. The pouchy fruit. We'll bring this on up because we're going to have to worry about it a little bit later. But for right now, we're okay. Then we're going to fish with our... Yeah, let's fish with some worms. A bunch of worms. So I guess we have one bunch of worms. From here, we're going to speed up time using the two key until we catch something. Come on, little fishies. Who wants to be biting? Ah, little fishies have decided to join me. I'm going to reel in a bit. You want to watch the fish's health. If it gets too high, they get away. And if you don't, if you reel too much and their health gets too low, they die. So either way, they get away. Additionally, there is some RNG here. So if you play it wrong, they can just get away randomly too, which can be... A little bit frustrating, but I think if we can just get him inside of our Im Ah, he got away randomly. And so now we just wasted an hour and a half fishing and reeling something in that got away randomly. I would actually recommend that they get rid of that feature. It's a little bit frustrating. There's not much you can do about it. Like, it should all be related to, like, the fish itself. Like, the randomness is cool, but it just sometimes it screws you at the wrong moment and you can die because a fish gets away at the wrong time through no fault of your own. There we go, let's pull him on out. We got ourselves, I think, an anchovy. And so now what we wanna do is we wanna fish with the anchovy to get something even bigger. And so we'll throw that on out. Let's go ahead and speed up time until we catch something. Come on, little fishy. If I had one wish, I'd catch a fish. Put it on my pole. And get dinner rolling. I don't know. It's like a folksy song that I'm working on about fishing. Okay, so we got one on the hook right now. Let's reel it in real fast. And all we can do is sincerely, truly, and deeply hope that it doesn't get away. Because if it does, we are going to be in deep, deep bantha poodoo. And so let's keep its health nice and low. We don't want it to get away by getting too strong. Hooked progress is looking solid. Let's keep on reeling. Very, very nice. Looking good. Keep on reeling. I think one more and we should be all right. There we go, and let's pull it on out. And we got ourselves, what is that right there? A 529 gram salmon. So that's pretty good, not too terrible right there. The next thing that I would recommend is that we go up to the north. What's inside this cave, by the way? I don't know that I've ever been inside this cave. There are animals in this area, that's weird. Okay, so if we set up a campfire in here, we'll actually be in pretty solid shape to survive. So I think I may do that. It's 637 though. Let's maybe try and make our campfire next to the creek up there. So let me climb up here. It is going to cost us a little bit of our ancillary energy. Is that the word that I want? I don't know if that's the word that I want. Our extra energy there. It's going to use up some of our extra energy. And then if we go up this way, don't walk up through the center up here. It'll get you into trouble. If you do, you may get stuck inside that tree, which toots blows. You probably don't want to do that. Getting stuck can ruin your game entirely we're gonna head off to the left and if we can camp next to the creek for the night we can cook up this fish and then we'll be able to eat make merry and also maintain our hydration i've never made a merry before but i figure it's as easy as any other like physical human biological activity it'd be just like making a bob or a john a steve or you know a stacy making a merry same activity you just name it a little bit different at the end if we walk to the west as hard as we can ooh, some more sticks we're gonna need those let me grab that real fast we're also going to need these leaves in just a minute. Hopefully there's more berries on this tree if we get really lucky. There are, so there's more berries on the bush. 
We'll grab those very, very rapidly. And now what we want to do is we want to hit the space bar, we'll go to crafting, and we'll make ourselves a fire. And that takes four sticks and a big stick, or four branches and a big stick. So there it is. We got the campfire. The next thing we want to do is we want to place our campfire on the ground right there. It's not protected from the wind, and it might burn too fast, but that's all right. The wind can actually aid you in whipping up the fire, so it's not too huge of a deal. Let's get this started. We'll light it up. That takes two energy. It's now started, and we want to throw some fuel on top of it now. The fuel that I'm going to use are going to be sticks, and so we'll throw one on there. We'll also throw maybe a big stick on there since we've got plenty of those. It's got enough fuel for several hours. I'm going to save the extra stick for a bit. And from there, let's go ahead and cook up our fish right now. We do that with a big stick and the fish. And that's going to give us, what does the salmon meal do for us? I'll have one extra large salmon meal. Let me see here. The extra large salmon meal is going to give us 40 energy, so that's not very much. Instead, what I would suggest we do is that we conserve for right now. We be very careful about the resources that we have in front of us. We drink some water, keep ourselves hydrated. Do I have anything to fill right now? I do. I can actually fill up my pouchy fruit. Very cool. It's got a gourd or something inside of it that we can use as a storage receptacle. On this side, we're just going to hang out next to the fire for a bit. And so let me see if I turn this on. How rapidly does the fuel amount go down? The flame strength is looking really, really solid. I don't want to go to bed till at least 11 o'clock, so we're going to wait it out. I'm not going to add any more fuel to the fire. It looks like that should last for a bit, and it should keep us warm. So instead, let's go to sleep. We should wake up around maybe 5 and oh, 3 in the morning. Okay, we didn't quite make it. And it looks like we're going to be... It's so cold that we can't sleep. And so we need to add a bit more fuel to the fire. I think we can probably get some more vines. So I'm going to throw those on in. So let's blow wind in here. We gotta keep this fire going. If we don't keep the fire going, we're gonna be toast real, real quick. And so we gotta wait it out till morning. The next thing we also wanna do is we'll throw... I bet we'll get some more branches and sticks. So let me throw a couple of sticks in there too. It's raining, and so we're just gonna have to wait that out, unfortunately. The best side of this is that because of the rain, we don't really have to worry about the river drying up, which is the big thing that I always worry about. So if the river dries up, we'll be in deep, deep doo-doo. But for right now, we look solid. I'm going to try and keep warm. We probably should have made our cover in a cave. Fuel amount's going to go down pretty rapidly. Let me throw some sticks in there, maybe. And we're just going to try and keep ourselves taken care of until morning. I'm going to speed up time for just a second. And once the sun comes up, we should be in better shape to stay warm. Hopefully once the rain goes away. Or we can just hang out under a tree for a bit. Yeah, we're up to 60 degrees right now. Let me drink one more little bit of water. Awesome. The bathe option you see right there, some people I know are going to ask about bathing. If you wanted to bathe, what bathing does is if it's really, really hot out, it allows you to immerse yourself in water and just keep cool. So that's the only function that it has. It looks like we... Okay, so we made it. There's nothing else down here, unfortunately. We should probably get going with trapping or something of that nature, but gathering up sticks is going to be a big deal too. How many fruits do I have left? Inventory. We have a salmon meal. I'm going to eat that right now. I'm going to eat a couple fruits because I think it's important. And then let's go back to the east and we'll see what we can find off maybe in the forest zone while we bide our time. we got some leaves right there. Not interested in the leaves. Instead, let's go down to this little thicket and see if there's anything we can make use of here. So there are. There's some branches on both sides. There's no big sticks, though, which makes me worried. I think you can use branches to cook meat. The reason that it makes me worried is because if we catch more fish, which is my goal, I wanted to use a little bit of time here, and that's where I actually see the biggest correlation to Unreal World, is that in Unreal World, I spent a stupid amount of time fishing. That was just what I did a lot of. Nothing in there. Nothing right there. Nothing right there either, so let's step over the hole. We might get a little bit unlucky. Ah, we got one right there. We'll extract a worm from there. We'll extract a worm from right there. There we go. So we got a couple of worms. It said we only had... What? So did we get multiple worms right there? I don't need the leaves right now, so I'm going to leave those behind. Hopefully we can pick up a few more sticks on our way east as well. And now the name of the game is grabbing ourselves as many fish as possible. I'm also going to check the berry bush over here on this side because I think it's pretty awesome. People named Barry all grown on a bush. Surprising fact that you're not going to find in the encyclopedia right there. They tend to hide it and censor it because berries don't want you to know where they come from. Instead, they, it's all clandestine. They sneak on into the headquarters. They bujitsu assassinate people just to make sure that they never rat them out. It's a dirty business, but you know what? I suppose somebody's got to do it, and that somebody is berry. Very, very berry. If I go up this way, I think that's where this berry bush was. I hope that it regrew already. If it's hydrated enough, it should be very, very rapid. Yeah, yeah, there it is. We got plenty of berries. Awesome. So we'll grab some of those. Nice. And how many herbs do I have? 
If I go down through here, do I have any herbs? I don't have any herbs at all. What we could also stand to get is if I can get a couple of rocks, I think that would be important. It looks like there's only one rock up here, but let's climb up here and see what we actually find because we got plenty of time left in the day to actually do all those random tasks like fish and have fun. So if we can go northwards, maybe there's something good up here too. Assuming we don't get like bad weather or anything like that. Off to the left, it looks like we've got another mountain range and maybe another pouchy fruit. Yeah, another pouchy fruit. Awesome. Throw that on into our inventory. That right there is an alcove that you can build your base in that'll protect you from like the wind and other natural enemies of fire. Also rain, I suppose, while we're talking about it. I don't want to leave anybody out. Like, hey, I've been drowning right now. I am just dropping. My morale is going downward so rapidly, and you're not even going to bring me into this? Well, aren't you a wet blanket? I'm like, well, I'm not a wet blanket. I would say that I'm more... It looks like I'm wearing some kind of traditional Japanese garb, or maybe some kind of, like, school uniform or something. I don't know what I'm wearing at the moment, to be fair. From the front, it looks like maybe, like, a traditional Japanese outfit. But then, or maybe like a Chinese one or something like that, you'll have to forgive my ignorance. I'll apologize right now. You'll have to forgive that because I don't know the names of them or what they are. Or maybe like some kind of school outfit. Those are the two things that it looks like to me, but we got plenty of time to catch fish. I think as long as we get started with the fishing by like 12 a.m., we should be all right. On this side, there are animals in this area, and we could make a snare if we wanted to. These herbs right here are important because they let you make a coconut casserole type thing or like a coconut soup or something. There we go. We got some branches off this side. And what I would suggest right now, let's go east a little bit further just to make sure that we've got everything in the area. I don't want to leave anything behind. We got a couple of vines up here. I may grab those. Cost us some energy, but I think it'll be worth it. With five vines, we shouldn't need to harvest those for much longer. I don't remember there being anything off to the east. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go to my inventory. Let's eat. Oh, I got the wrong thing right. That's okay. It worked out. And then we'll grab a couple of these right here. And what I'm going to do is once we get back towards the west of here. There we go. Once we get towards the west of here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig a hole. And it's going to take six energy for each of these that I do. But it's totally going to be worth it. And so if we dig that down right there and then we extract the dirt, we can build a trap on top of it. And so there it is. It takes three sticks in order to do this. And so if I put one right there, there's some big sticks over here too. I'm going to grab those. We also need to bait this, by the way. So I'm going to set bait. We'll put one in there right there. We've got 35 left, which means that if I pick up this and I pick up this, that's going to leave us close. I'd rather play it closer to the chest with regards to our energy. I could make, let's, we'll go with one of those right there. And that should finance us enough to get another trap going, I hope. And so there's another trap. We excavate the dirt. And then we build a trap right there. Good. And then we go through and we bait this one as well. And that's actually a Native American trick. You want to get as many snares and as many traps out as possible. Because they knew back then that like making as many of these as you could increase your chances of catching something. Normally you'd look for a rabbit trail or something like that before you set up snares. But once you do... It's actually a very, very low calorie cost for you to set up a whole bunch of snares. It's not something that's going to take you a lot of time or a lot of effort or a lot of energy, which means that the payoff, presuming that you catch a couple of rabbits over the course of a day or two, is that you end up with more calories than you spend, and that is the end-all be-all of survival. You want to gain more calories than you're spending. That's how human life continues forward. For right now, we didn't check the cave yet, but I'm going to go down. Let's slide down very fast. Later on, I'll probably try and make a climbing vine or something of that nature to make that a little bit easier and a little bit more cost effective with regards to the amount of energy we have to use in order to accomplish it. But for right now, we just need to get back to fishing, so let's do it. Speed up time for just a minute, which I would recommend that you do if you're fishing because it can be super boring sitting here waiting for good stuff to happen. What a day to be fishing indeed. They're playing with the bait. And we've got something on the line. There it is. Let's go ahead and reel in because his health is high. We're going to continue reeling. That one's actually a critical hit. You saw his health drop right there. Remember, if the health gets too high or too low, they escape. Or sometimes they just escape randomly in my experience. So take from that what you will. I think one more hooking, assuming that we can keep him on the line. We should be able to pull him out quick style. So there it is. We'll pull him out, and we got ourselves a minnow. Good. So let's go ahead and fish with the minnow now in order to get ourselves a little bit more food. Off we go. Let's go ahead and speed up time. If I could speed up time. If I could catch a fishy. They're playing with the bait. We're looking good right now. 
All right, we got a big one right here. He's got a little bit of health. I'm going to let that build up a tiny bit. If we lose this guy, I'm going to cry. So having hooked him now, let's keep him on the line as much as possible. I do wish that this was a little bit more interactive. I'd like to see it like telling you to pull in certain directions or something like that. Might be a little bit more fun. I don't know if that was lightning or what the hell that was, but it was a little bit scary. And it made me think that maybe the fish shot me with lightning or something. We're playing Pokemon where you got like water Pokemon firing lightning bolts at me. Take that up a little bit higher. I don't want it to crit. Go a little bit more. Let's pull him on out. And we got ourselves a salmon. Actually, a 712 gram salmon. Not bad at all. I'll probably check in on the trap tomorrow. For right now, I'm going to leave it where it lies because I don't think we will have caught anything just yet. We put the trap out. Typically, in my experience, you want to check the trap the next day. Instead, what I'm going to endeavor to do, we're going to go up to the north. We're going to get our fire started on up. I'm also going to pick up any sticks or anything I can find on the way. Inventory, we probably want to use... Oh, we don't have anything. So if I use that, I can crack open a coconut, which might... Oh, it took 15 energy to crack open a coconut? Well, that's not good. Let's go into our inventory. That's actually, I don't know why it took 18 energy to crack open a coconut. Apparently it did though. It didn't say anything about that. We only get hydration from the coconut. It won't let you eat the coconut for some reason. I've never been able to figure out why that's a thing, but you can't do it. So if I take a coconut, where are the herbs at? What if I, we're probably gonna die right now, by the way, I'm just letting you know. Unless we use that to get a whole bunch of energy, but that's going to make us sick. If I hydrate now, we should be alright. But that's going to give us two hours of sickness, which is all bad. So, I think the two hours of sickness makes you lose maybe hunger a little bit faster to simulate throwing up or maybe hydration. If it's hydration, that's nothing to worry about and I wouldn't be concerned. But, everything else is looking pretty bad right now. We also have to make ourselves a new fishing rod. Otherwise, we simply are not going to make it. You know, I think I may leave this as just like a single episode series because honestly, after we catch rabbits and after... Why did I get leaves from sticks right there? Huh. Interesting. I got leaves from sticks. Is our campfire gone or is it still available? I was going to say the pile should still be there. How are we doing on berries? Oh, good. We got three of them. Well, that should help us get by for a while. Let's go ahead and we're going to hydrate. We're going to refill all of our little pouches. There it is right there. I would also recommend that we refill all of our empty coconut halves. Once we refill that, with our inventory, where are the herbs hiding at? Used in making coconut soups by a fire. So let's go ahead and get that going right here. We'll light it on up. That's going to take a little bit of energy. We've got a little flame. Let's blow in a little bit more air. Everything we can get going. And if we can get this thing nice and lit up, we'll be... Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So there it is. There it is. And we're going to be sick for a couple of hours. So we're going to need to find a way to figure that out too. So if I wanted to, if I take that and I take that, we can make a coconut soup out of it. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. Let's make a steamy coconut soup. Why not? Can we make a big one right there? A wellness coconut soup. And it looks like that takes a little bit more of the herbs. Okay. That works out fine for me. That seems like a great thing for us to eat in the morning to make sure that we have a little bit of energy. Especially since we don't have enough berries to get by. Looking very, very nice. I think I'm going to break it off right here. Let me know what you think. If you want another episode, we can do another episode. We haven't caught any rabbits or anything like that. I'm going to check the traps in the morning tomorrow. We're due to be sick for a little while longer. And so, I think this is a pretty good primer just in case people wanted to check the game out come release day. I like it for what it is right now. I was thinking about turning it into a weekly any newcomer, but I just wasn't sure about it. So, I'll see y'all later. Hi, do everybody.